This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video focuses on how to use activity-based costing to allocate overhead costs to products. Activity-based costing is often called ABC, and ABC uses several different cost pools organized by activity, and we'll talk about how this is done throughout this video, to allocate overhead costs. So what we mean by cost pools is simply taking overall overhead costs for the entire company related to production and uh, organizing those costs by uh, activity. So some examples of activities are purchasing of materials. We have perhaps a purchasing department that takes care of the purchasing of materials that we need for production. Setting up machines in our production facility uh, or assembling products within our production facility. Those are just a couple, a few examples. We have more that you'll see throughout this video. Uh, the overhead costs are allocated products based on activities used to produce each product. So the more we use activities to produce a particular product, the more overhead costs get charged to that product. In a separate video, we talk about allocating overhead using plant, the plant-wide allocation approach, which is what you see in the first box here. And we talk about allocating overhead using uh, departmental rates, using the department allocation approach. And of course, this video is focusing on activity-based costing. But what I wanted to show you here is we're, we're dealing with the same $8 million in this example. We're dealing with the same $8 million in overhead costs related to production. Uh, we're just using three different approaches or talking about three different possibilities uh, of how to allocate that $8 million in overhead to our products. So the first, as I said, the first two approaches we talk about in a separate video, so I won't get into these in too much detail, but I do want you to see that these pie charts all total $8 million. So it's the same $8 million, we just have different ways of allocating that $8 million out to our products. Using the plant-wide allocation approach, first box, we simply come up with one predetermined overhead rate for the entire plant, and we use that rate to allocate overhead to products. In the second box here, the department allocation approach, we use a predetermined overhead rate for each department. It just so happens we have two departments in this example. It could be three or four or five or ten. But uh, we use a predetermined overhead rate for each department and allocate overhead to products based on those different rates. Now we're going to talk about activity-based costing, the third box here, and how to allocate overhead using rates by activity within production. And we just, just so happens we have five different activities here. Uh, if you add them all up, though, you'll see that it adds up to $8 million, but we're going to allocate overhead to products based on the use of these activities in the production process, and that's what we'll be doing in this video. The first step in performing activity-based costing is to identify the costly activities that are in our production process to produce products. And the goal here is to understand the activities required to make our products, of course, and then to narrow down those activities to those that significantly impact overhead costs. So using, again, sail right as our example, assuming that we produce two different models of sailboats, a basic model and a deluxe model. Again, the basic model is a no-frills model, not too many features and relatively low cost for us, and the deluxe model is the opposite, has all the features and is relatively high cost. So Sailrite identified the following activities, and we're going to be using these activities throughout this example uh, in this video. So we identified purchasing materials as one activity, setting up machines, this is all in production now, running machines, assembling products, and inspecting finished goods. So those are the five different activities that we identified that are significant within our production process at Sailrite. The second step in performing activity-based costing is to assign overhead costs to those activities, those significant activities that we identified in step one. So this requires identifying the costs that are associated with each activity, see that here, first bullet point, and then uh, attaching those costs to the activity. So if you go down here for sale right, the work has been done for us. We now see that $1.2 million in overhead costs relates to purchasing materials, $1.6 million in overhead costs relates to setting up machines, and right on down the line. Notice that the total is still $8 million. We still have that $8 million here, but we've simply taken that $8 million and broken it out into five different activities. 
The third step in performing activity-based costing is to identify what drives the costs that are associated with each activity. So um, the, an example would be, going right down here to the second bullet point, uh, the cost of setting up machines is caused by the number of times that the machines have to be set up for production. So the more machine setups, the higher the cost. Here are the cost drivers that were identified for sale right for those five activities that we talked about before. I won't go through every single one, but we'll go through a couple. So purchasing materials. What drives those costs? Well, the number of purchase requisitions that are issued then drives the cost within that activity. Setting up machines. Well, the number, as we mentioned before, of machine setups will drive the costs associated with setting up machines. And we've done the same thing for the last three activities here as well. The fourth step in performing activity-based costing is to calculate the predetermined overhead rate for each activity. If you've looked at the videos related to the plant-wide approach and the departmental approach, you'll see that we did something very similar there. We set up predetermined overhead rates for the entire plant using the plant-wide approach, and we calculated predetermined overhead rates uh, for each department using the department approach, and now we're going to determine or calculate the predetermined overhead rate for each activity. We've already identified the activities. They're down here. There are five of them. We've identified the costs, the cost that, or rather the cost driver that drives the costs associated with those activities. That's here. And we've identified in step three the overhead costs associated with each cost driver. You see that here. So now, based on what we think we're going to use in the way of this cost driver activity for the upcoming year, we're going to calculate a predetermined overhead rate for each activity. And again, the predetermined overhead rate is the estimated activity overhead cost divided by the estimated activity level. So taking the first uh, item as an example, purchasing materials, we're going to start with $1.2 million, divide that by 10,000 purchase requisitions that we expect to issue, and that gives us a predetermined overhead rate of $120 per requisition. So what that means is if I'm building a basic sailboat and I issue a requisition, a purchase requisition, I'm going that boat is going to get charged $120 in overhead related to that requisition. Now we'll take a look at the fifth and final step in performing activity-based costing. Once we have our predetermined overhead rate for each activity, we can then use those rates to allocate overhead costs to our products. How do we do that? We're going to multiply the predetermined overhead rate for each activity by the level of activity used by each product. So let's take a look at how this works for sale right. Again, you'll see the five activities that we've identified in this whole process and the overhead rates that were established for each activity. And now we're going to take the overhead rate for each activity and multiply it by the activity level for each product, the basic sailboat and the deluxe sailboat. Right, here's the basic sailboat and the deluxe sailboat. So for purchasing materials, we're going to take, that's this here, $120 per requisition. We issued 7,000 requisitions for the basic sailboat, that's right here. So we're going to multiply 7,000 times $120 per requisition and that means that $840,000 in overhead was allocated to the basic sailboat related to these requisitions that were issued. For the deluxe sailboat, 3,000 requisitions were issued. Multiply that by $120 per requisition, and $360,000 in overhead was charged to the deluxe sailboat product related to purchasing materials. We do that for the next four activities, and you'll see then when we add up our overhead costs, what the total overhead costs are for each product. So for the, uh, rather the basic sailboat, you'll see that $5,020,000 in overhead was charged to this product. For the deluxe sailboat, 
$2,980,000 in overhead was charged. And you'll see that we have this $8 million, that those two amounts add up to $8 million. That's this number right here. Now we take out the complexities of having underapplied or overapplied overhead. So we assume that there is no underapplied or overapplied overhead. And as a result, the overhead that was allocated to each of these products in total is $8 million. The next calculation then at the bottom here of this chart is to come up with the overhead cost per unit for each product. We know how much was charged to in total to each product, the basic sailboat and the deluxe sailboat, but now we want to know what that equates to on a per unit basis. The footnotes describes this, how to come up with these numbers. The $1,004,000 in overhead cost per unit for the basic sailboat is the $5 million $20,000 in overhead that was allocated to that product divided by the number of units, the number of basic sailboats that were produced, and that in the footnote was 5,000 units. So $5,020,000 in total overhead divided by 5,000 units that were produced gives us uh, a per unit overhead cost amount of $1,004. Run the same math for the deluxe sailboat, $2,980,000 divided by the number of units, 1,000, uh, and we get $2,980 in overhead cost per unit for the deluxe sailboat. Now that we have this information, we'll go to the next slide and figure out the product cost per unit for each product. Here's our product cost information, our direct materials, direct labor, and overhead costs. Add them all up and we get the total product cost, and you'll notice that the overhead cost per unit comes from the previous slide, those two amounts. The direct materials and direct labor amounts were given, and so we add those all together, and that gives us our total product cost per unit of 2604 for the basic sailboat and 5030 for the deluxe sailboat. In the next video, the part two video, we'll take a look at how best to use this information.